Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we are just fresh back uh, from the moon and from that unfortunate incident with the post commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed the little uh, montage there, ha ha. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's really properly a montage when it's just four scenes, but uh, and four very long scenes. It would, it would have to be a lot more inspirational to be a real montage. But uh, best I could do under the circumstances. I hope you guys... Uh, enjoyed the somewhat quicker paced summary style as opposed to the more detailed uh, thing that we usually do. I'm thinking maybe once we start building more advanced rockets I should start doing that for the stuff we build because while it is probably I think entertaining to watch me try to build a rocket it takes a while and like watching one of the, watching that video in in fast forward it was actually pretty cool just to hear me briefly describe a few thoughts I had while building the robot and then like ha rocket rather and then haha suddenly it's done okay so uh things that we wanted to do include researching uh landing and advanced flight control i think um So this is interesting. An advanced inline stabilizer, I think, would let us perform rolls and stuff more easily on a on a heavier sort of rocket. Um, would help if we were launching a, a bigger, you know, oh, a lander can. That's adorable. Uh, I never noticed that before. Anyway, uh, we, if we if we end up having to like put more stuff into our rocket in order to fit to accommodate a lander at the top, we might start to have trouble using just the um, the gimbling engine to rotate. I don't know. I don't think that's very likely. I guess what this would be for is for a... Once we're already flying in space and we've turned down the engine, we might have trouble rotating, in which case this stabilizer might be useful. But anyway, a lander can monopropellant tank that has uh, RCS in it I guess is that the main thing for this this requires monopropellant doesn't include it this requires some but doesn't include it so this is like the propellant tank okay so we might have to do another tutorial before we actually like try landing on the moon but these are these are the tools we'll want for that uh, however even before we land on the moon we want to do another flyby and like get into a lower orbit I think um, so I want to check and see if there is a science thing we should unlock first. Miniaturization? Yeah, I don't know what these are all about. Oh, a docking port. How exciting. Um, if there's anything we should unlock before we pick up the stuff that we want for landing, basically. Space exploration. Oh, we got a rover. We don't really need a rover. Aviation. Yeah, we don't really need that, but we could get aerodynamics anyway. I'm not sure what the point of these are. They look mostly like they're for um, space planes, so forget it. Advanced construction. We could get better nose cones. Better uh, decouplers? Is th this is what this is? Um... This is something we could use maybe for the for a lander stage. We don't really need any of this right now. Um, likewise, now this could be a little bit useful, but it's all Rocco Max stuff. Hmm. And I don't understand what to do with fuel ducts yet. So I'm thinking that like none of this is really that exciting, except maybe this. If we like wanted to have a slightly more compact and stabler way to mount three boosters, we could mount like three boosters under our upper stage instead of around it. But that doesn't seem that compelling. So I think we'll just go ahead and unlock advanced flight control and space exploration. I don't think we need any of this other stuff for our immediate goals. Yeah, this has the stabilizer, the lander, the RCS. And space exploration has... wait. Not that. Landing. Because it has uh, lander gears. And I still don't totally know what this is all about. But lander struts... 
is the main thing that we're getting out of this, I think. Maybe this too, but again, I don't really know what this does. So, all right. We'll maybe play around with it uh, on the surface. Cool. So that's done. Is there any, like, rubble we should pick up somewhere? No, it looks like we've got everything under control. Um, how are we doing for contracts? We have one active. These guys want to fly by the moon. Okay. Um, and I think we could just plop them into the uh, rocket that we flew to the moon with last time. But I'd like to do one more flyby and try to get into a low lunar orbit. Mooner orbit, I guess. Um... Oh, look, that's our next mission. Stay in a stable orbit. And then come back. Cool. Well, that's what I want to do next. Um, we could do this at the same time, but that's a little bit more dangerous. Plant flag on the moon. Oh, the offer expired earlier, but it looks like we got it back. All right. Well, cool. This is a total of, like... Uh, 100 and... Do these add up to the same amount? These two and this? 128,000. This is 128,000. Yeah, it comes out the same. It's just we get some of it for orbiting and some of it for returning. I see. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, I think we'll just take this one. And, um... Is there anything we should do to our rocket? Uh before we go. Did we forget to measure the temperature out on the moon? I think we did forget that, actually. Oh, that must be what blew up on re-entry. These thermometers can't survive... Okay. They can't survive the re-entry we go through, so we would have to put it into a service bay or something. But it's just not important enough to warrant treatment like that. Okay, anything else we could put on here that would be good? Um... Start from the bottom, look at these. Okay, so what is this all about? You... I have no idea. So you mount a whole nother rocket on this, and there's another... This has like two mounting parts. You would put one of them onto the rover, and I, I, I don't understand this. Forget it. Do we have a new science piece? No. We could attach a barometer, but I think those have similar re-entry problems. The only thing is that, like, we were pretty light on fuel, and I'm not sure... I think we have enough that we could get into stable orbit if we wanted to. I don't think we have to do anything fancy to make that change. Um, we could add... So this is a tiny little thing for a small stage, and this is for, like, a main rocket stage. But we didn't really have any trouble with uh, rotating stuff, so I don't, I don't think we particularly need that. We could attach a... We could build a... like. So this is for... W once we could build a, a stage above our orbital stage for, like... This is the lander stage, but... Um, I don't think we're ready for that yet. All right, so let's just save this guy and uh, give it a launch. So we have now two contracts to go to the moon. Uh, one of them is tourists, and so we want to... This is going to be our second practice run, uh, and if that works, we'll rip out the science part, uh, replace it with a tourist canister, and uh, fly by the moon again. Um, but the one we actually will return is, or m that we'll complete, is orbiting the moon, we hope. I think it won't take that much extra fuel. Let's... It might actually take more fuel than I think. Let's, um... Hmm. I'm thinking of maybe, like improving these guys to the larger boosters, but I think that that's a bit much. Um, then we would go, like, rocketing into the sky way faster than we want to. Or maybe not! Maybe that would get us 
Because these, the boosters we've been using have... Yeah, let's recover this vessel, actually, and see what the larger ones look like next to this. Because we've been having to use a fair amount of fuel from our orbital stage to get into orbit, um, including the remainder of our fuel from the liquid stage. And if we had solid rocket boosters that could get us higher, uh, maybe we wouldn't need to use so much of the fuel from the upper stages. So let's put these aside for the moment. Um, and what we were using was these guys, right? Yeah. So what if we put on these guys? They're actually about the right height for the rocket that we have, honestly. Just like that. Maybe a bit higher. Like that. There's our boosters. Huh. I think this is probably going to push us a bit too hard, so let's see. How much thrust are these providing? These are providing, at sea level, 250 kilonewtons. And these provide twice as much. Now, they're heavier, and we want more effect, so we don't want to turn them down to half, but maybe like three quarters. So these are pushing harder, but not like crazy hard. We may struggle to keep this under control as we lift off, I think. Um, call this the advanced rocket too. Um, we, we may struggle to keep the rocket under control now that so much of our power is provided by these boosters compared to the center stage. But uh, I think it'll get us higher, at least. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, oh I forgot to... No, no, no. Revert. Revert. Undo. Uh, recover vessel. Recover vessel. I forgot to attach the... Um, The, the landing pad stabilizers. And I, I wanted to go back before the spaceship fell over and crashed. <laughs> uh, structural. We want these. We want three of them, like so. Where's our center of mass? Right there in the center, huh? Well, fair enough. I think that's probably fine. We're going to have a bit of trouble, I think, um, rotating. Maybe this is the, um, the reason to insert a reaction wheel near the center of mass, or like, say, here. If we could pull this down and, um, not aerodynamics. Where the heck are these? Command? We attached an advanced inline stabilizer right below the decoupling stage. Um, I think we might have a much easier time uh, controlling this, compensating for how hard these boosters are pushing, uh, making it easier for us to control the direction of the ship on the way up. We put it near the center of mass so that uh, it will be good at rotating rather than pushing where the uh, solid stuff at the bottom. We have Jeb flying. Is that okay? No. I really... I want our top guy on this, Neil Bald, or whatever his name is. Uh, this is a difficult flight, and we could use our our best carbon, Kerbal. I always forget which is the adjective, and like I say it wrong, and which is the noun. Get out of here, Jeb. Come on in, Neil Bald. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Either that or it's a dumb name. Sorry to anyone listening to this video named Neil Bald, <laughs> incidentally. Um, okay, so 
let's double check. Our heading right now is zero, uh, which means if we were to press S, we would go north. Sorry, if we press W, we would go north. But we don't. We want to go east, and that's D. All right. Um, yes, I agree with that assessment. Let's turn on the SAS, throttle down to like a third, and uh, is there anything I have to do to turn on the um, the reaction wheel or something? It's running. Okay. You could turn down how much authority it has, make it apply less pressure, but we don't want to do that. Uh, hang on. We're missing a step here. Where are the... Okay, these two fire at the same time, but we also want the liquid fuel to fire at the same time as well. Then decouple those, then decouple this, then activate the orbital stage, then come home. Okay. Whew. All right. This seems okay, then. Uh, let's go in three, two, one, lift. Boy, it's taken off pretty slowly, but we should have a lot of sustain. Like this, this rocket, we're going to have a lot of solid fuel. It's okay that we're going slowly. Real rockets don't just take off like, like a shot. Uh, okay, let's not tilt any further than that, thanks. Yeah, the solid fuel is going to last quite a while. We've added a lot more of it. And hopefully it'll be enough to get us... Let's tilt over some more. Almost all the way into orbit just on solid fuel would be great. Um, or even all the way into orbit? Goodness. Yeah, it's really nice to have still the solid fuel stuff attached at this stage. I'm worried, actually, when we decouple the upper one of these, it might slam into the ship on the way down. I think that's probably an unreasonable concern, but... Oh, jeez. We're experiencing uh, atmospheric issues. Uh... Uh, I would love to get rid of these. See ya. Uh, throttle all the way up on this stage, right? Oh my gosh, we are going so high. Cut the thrusters, holy smokes. Okay, so... That was more thrust than we really needed. Uh, but, you know what? Honestly, this is not the worst thing that's ever happened to us. We have a ton of fuel left in our upper stage. Or I guess this is not really our upper stage so much as our inner slash middle stage. Um, turn off the SAS and just go, like, uh, act, stop. Rotate a little more this way. And let's just burn now a lot. Mm, no, that's not a good idea. Our orbit is higher than I would like it to be. But at apoapsis is still the most efficient place to adjust our periapsis. Uh, even though it's not as efficient as it would be if we had gotten lower. So, the solid fuel things worked great. It's just... We aimed too high. We didn't roll enough. Not roll. Yaw. You can, I mean, you can describe it as a roll, sort of, um... In the vernacular. But in, in terms of, like, technical aerodynamic stuff, that was really a, a yaw or a pitch, depending on which perspective you think of the ship as being at. You certainly can't call it a roll, unless you think of the ship as flying sideways, in which case you're crazy. It flies pointy end first. <laughs> uh, so we just want to aim for the horizon. Um, and hopefully, the fact that we overshot so it's, it's definitely the case that having overshot is going to make it more expensive to get our periapsis to where we want it. But there are some compensating uh, good effects as well. One, we won't have to raise our apoapsis as high to get into lunar orbit, moonar orbit, uh, because this side is already pretty high, so we'll, we'll save fuel on the other side. 
And also, it means we saved a ton of fuel in our uh, in our middle stage here that we can use to adjust apoapsis or, or periapsis rather. Um, so I think now is probably an okay time to start our insertion burn here. We could even plan a maneuver, honestly. Um, right? I can do that. Let's add a maneuver here. Let's say I wanted to burn prograde like. Enough to get into a stable orbit. How much would that be? Uh, that's probably too much. That's that's definitely too much. Um, so less of that, please. Or wait, less is like this. Are we getting too close? All right, we don't have time to actually plan this. We're just going to have to go by the seat of our pants here. Delete this. Uh, and just fire it up. Hope for the best. I think it's a couple minutes worth of burn, sadly. So the fact that we're starting this just a couple of seconds before we reach Apoapsis is a bit expensive. I can hardly see the orbit changing at all. Alright, it's starting to widen. Oh, there's our solid rocket boosters, I think, is what these must be. Yeah. Alright, we might actually still have some of our middle stage left by the time we get into a proper orbit. Um. So definitely still not the best orbital maneuver we could have made, but pretty okay, I think, all things considered. Where's my periapsis? Show me that periapsis. Stop! Okay, 114 kilometers, and our apoapsis is 175. Great. We're in a an orbit. 91 degrees, so we are right on the money with respect to our orientation, I think. Um, or close enough, anyway. And we could, if we wanted... Well, so let's, let's do some... You guys haven't seen all this maneuver stuff, except in Fast Forward, so let's do this a bit slowly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the moon as my target, saying that's where I want to go. And that's going to tell me a few more things. It shows me the moon's orbit. Um, and it shows me where my orbital plane lines up with the moon's orbital plane. Because we're not quite at um, exactly the right mm, orbital inclination. Like you can imagine, there's lots of orbits around Kerbin. There's an orbit that goes from the North Pole to the South Pole like this. And it would be very hard from that orbit to get to the moon. And there's lots of orbits that go like... 45 degree angles, like this, or whatever. Um, it's roughly equatorial is where the moon is. So this thing tells us how far off our orbit is from one that overlaps with the moon's orbit. And it turns out we did a spectacular job. 0 0.5 degrees inclination is great. Um, I'm not even going to bother correcting that, I don't think. Uh, and so now, we want to... Remember what we did at Apoapsis was the way we've been doing orbital insertions previously. I don't know. I guess you guys have seen me go to the moon before, right? Just not with encounter nodes. Um, except in the fast forward one, which I'm, I promised to go over more carefully once we had a, a real time video. Um, so we have. We want to do a burn at our periapsis to. or somewhere. Periapsis would be best. Um. A burn, a prograde burn at periapsis to extend our apoapsis towards uh, a lunar orbit is the idea. Um, we don't have a lot of fuel left in this stage, so if we have to make a large burn, the game might overestimate 
how long, how, how much velocity we can gain in a time unit. If we have to like, if we like burn out our large stage and then, um, and then have to switch to the smaller rocket, uh, it'll overestimate. So anyway, what we want to do is find some place to apply a burn that will extend our periap or apoaptus towards the moon. And the place that seems best for that, I think, is not parallel across... I don't know, maybe parallel across from the moon, because the moon's not going to move very far while we're on our way to it. It takes us, like, a day to get there. And the, that, that means the moon will go from, like, here to here or something. Like, not that far. So we kind of, I guess, want to shoot from right here, honestly. Um, so let's see what that would look like. If, I, if we put a maneuver right, right here, add a maneuver... And so now there's six directions we can we can uh, uh, say we want to burn in, and you can apply burn in all three of them, all, all three dimensions at once. But we only want to do one. Um, and uh, so I can these these markers are the same ones we saw in the manual uh, several episodes ago. This is prograde, retrograde, normal, anti-normal, radial, anti-radial. Um, and so we want to make just a, a simple prograde burn here to extend our, uh, our apoapsis towards the moon. So just grab this and pull on it. And now this thing has appeared here saying, you will be gaining 10.5 meters per second over the course of, like, no time at all. And as a result, your orbit will, like, barely change at all. But we can pull a bit harder and say, okay, well, what if I wanted to gain, like, uh, oops. Say I wanted to gain a whole bunch of velocity, six, 776 meters per second. Well, we'd be burning for 37 seconds, which, okay, we don't have enough uh, enough fuel in our upper stage to do that, so that's not going to happen. We're, I'm kind of thinking we, we should jettison the, the lower stage now. It has a little bit of fuel left in it, but using it effectively is maybe going to be more of a hindrance just in terms of complexity compared to, like, how much it'll actually help us. Um... So anyway, we, we want to point our orbit towards the moon, um, and here is the wrong place to do it, because it gets us behind the moon, but I just want to get it, jeez, ah, like approximately the right size of burn, so that we're now, yeah, okay, we're, we're now like getting about to the moon's orbit, and what we can do now is say, okay, well that's the burn I want, but let's do it at a different point. Let's do it, say... What is this? Here. So what is this showing us? That's where the moon is. That's our closest approach. That's where the moon will be at our closest approach. So we'll be will be far too far counterclockwise of it, so we want to burn later. Get, like, over there. Something like this is the right time to burn, but we need to burn a bit harder because it's not so close to our periapsis. So something like this, maybe? Um, now, what's going to happen? We'll encounter the moon here. Um, this is the closest we'll get to the moon. And then we'll escape the moon's orbit here, so we actually won't get very close at all. Um, hmm. What we want is a low moon periapsis, ideally. The moon periapsis, one million meters. So maybe we need to burn a bit harder to get us behind the moon and then swing back around? Whoa, that's a bit much. I think. Our closest approach is a separation of two million meters. No, our periapsis is 900,000 meters. So that's where the moon is going to be when we get to it. And where is the closest we'll be exactly? Here. Hmm. 
Oh, what am I doing? I meant to pull where it is. Oh, jeez, I'm going to have to restart this thing. I meant to adjust when we burn, and I ended up pulling on some crazy knob that sent the orbit into a weirdo direction. Does, does undo work? No, stop! <laughs> Control Z was firing the thrusters. Okay, uh, well, don't do that then. Just let's make sure this didn't do anything dreadful to our orbit. Periapsis 119. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay, well, tell you what, guys. <sighs> We've gotten up into a stable Kerbin orbit, and um, there's still some planning left to do for how to actually get to the moon, and we'll do that in the next episode, I think. Uh, since uh, this encounter is taking a bit of time to investigate and explain. Uh, hopefully we should be able to get into lunar orbit do some science and maybe even fly all the way back home in the next episode uh, but maybe we'll maybe we'll take two more episodes to do that i don't know anyway hope you guys are enjoying this uh well this series in general but in particular this episode and this series of uh going to the moon little sub sub series couple episodes long anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you next time